In paying my respects to the Wongal elders, past, present and emerging, I say in the language of the Gadigal, Bujuri Gamarua, hello. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, Dennis and I are very, uh, we feel very privileged and very excited to be here. Uh, your, the Institute's Dr. Max Soberg said recently that if COVID has taught us anything, it's the importance of public health. And this very exciting announcement today concerns exactly that, a public health issue of extraordinary dimensions and which has been with us for far too long and which, as I understand it, has an epidemiology as challenging as that prevented by COVID-19. And so, Dennis and I, as the joint patrons of ADRI, are so pleased to be here on this proud day, not only for New South Wales, but for everyone here, and of course, it goes much further than that, it is globally a proud day. I don't think we need uh, an asbestos, international asbestos day, but uh, if we needed a, a, a sign to say anything, it's gotta be a global asbestos elimination day. And as we've already been told, this is not a national first, this is not uh, another tick on the expertise of this particular institute. This is an absolute, wonderful, exciting world first. And it has the imprimatur, as we've heard from the World Health Organization, we've had two wonderful video presentations which have just tell us, in the words of the experts, how important this is. But also like we've heard, and with all good achievements, the designation of the Asbestos Diseases Research Inst Institute, your ADRI, our ADRI, as a World Health Organization collaborating center for the elimination of asbestos-related diseases is the result of forethought and ambition, hard work, years of international collaboration and partnership. And it's a shared celebration and it's a shared amount of work. You have an extraordinarily dedicated team here. And I'm going to just say a, a couple of words about that team. You are led by Professor Takahashi. This event would not have happened had you not had the expertise uh, that Professor Takahashi brought into the Institute. But having met Professor now Ken on a number of occasions, what I really love, and, and Dennis and I have talked about this, it's this quiet, elegant intelligence that he brings to this place. And for the team, that's very important. Uh, you will, uh, I think a lot of learning, uh, you know, there's a lot, of talk, a lot of talk about culture in places. Culture is osmotic, but led by professor, the professor, you will have absorbed so much of that way of working, that elegant, quiet, dedicated way of working. And I once heard a very senior uh, doctor once say when I questioned him why he was a gastroenterologist of all things, uh, not a brain surgeon, he said it was a good mentor at the right time in his career. And uh, Professor, I know that is what you have, along with all the expertise that you have, brought into this particular institute and the researchers here will go on and they will become the Professor Takahashi's of the future. You are already all in the making. But there are others too who have been part of this collaboration and have made it possible. Uh, sadly, the patients, because you do have to work with the disease, the medical staff around Australia and in the Asia Pacific region, and the families families of the asbestos-related disease, including Bernie Banton, uh, who did become the public face of the disease, and good on him for doing so. Those things take courage, particularly against corporates. Would I not be right about that? <laughs> but fortunately, as we've heard, the corporates have come on board, and significantly, they have stayed on board, and thank you for that. CSR uh, in particular, James Hardy, because without that continuity in funding, the work becomes, uh, the, the research work really becomes the, the chancy and spasmodic. 
there is a huge human cost in this particular disease. I did many cases uh, when I was a judge uh, involving asbestos-related diseases. I didn't do them at first instance, but I've heard of judges who did so, and they talked about the traumatic uh, end-of-life phase of mesothelioma victims and uh, how difficult it was and the extent of their pain. And the stark legacy of using asbestos and asbestos-related products in Australia in building and infrastructure projects up until we officially banned it in Australia in 2003 and let that be a world ban eventually, is that, not even eventually, much, much sooner than later, is that thousands of people have died due to mesothelioma, asbestosis and other uh, asbestos-related cancers. One of those was a former governor of New South Wales, Governor David Martin, who died aged only 57 from a rare form of lung cancer caused by exposure to asbestos during his naval career. Uh, he had anticipated to have a full and uh, energetic five years at least in his role as governor of New South Wales, but was cut short within a very uh, short period of time. He has left his own legacy in our state, but it's a legacy we would have preferred not to have had in the way that we have it. You're the experts. I don't have to tell you about the slow latency of this disease. And it is because of that slow latency that we're still getting the disease coming through into the community. But the scary and continuing statistic is that each year, as 8 million Australians perform renovations, including to those ageing, asbestos-built pro properties, those fibro houses, as you drive down the, the coastal highways in particular, many more Australians will become an asbestos statistic. And so many more Australians will mourn the loss of a loved one as a result. Currently, mesothelioma alone accounts for some 800 deaths per year in Australia, many more than the, than the uh, uh, road deaths. But the true burden, as we understand it, of asbestos-related disease is over 4,000 Australian lives every year. 4,000 preventable deaths. You've already heard about the rock star status of ADRI and fantastic, and so you deserve it. You've been a pioneer in the science of the disease uh, and this has given you this unique opportunity to take your research beyond Australia. Again, we've already heard you are the global leader in this area and you've already shared your research with the world. And this formalised partnership now with the World Health Organisation has a significance and an impact well beyond Australia. And it's going to enable new developments and your future work, not only here in Australia, but most particularly in the developing and in the uh, emerging economies. It's another alarming fact in many countries of the Asian Pacific region that asbestos continues to be used. I was saying um, earlier, speaking about watching a TV program probably 10 years ago where uh, there was a, it was on ABC because I think that's the only channel, I think our TV got stuck there about 25 years ago. And it was a story about uh, asbestos being used in the building, in building industry in India, asbestos imported from Canada. And I just sat there and put my head in my hands having done so many of those cases uh, as a judge. And could you believe that a developed, sophisticated, educated country like Canada would still be sending this very, very dangerous product into a country which really couldn't, uh, in many ways, couldn't resist it uh, for the reasons that it was used so, so worldwide in the building in industry. Already, the Institute ADRI has been working in the Philippines and Fiji, and uh, you kept that work going, but of course we've heard about that little gremlin that sort of kept us all down for 12 months and kept us locked inside, uh, and you weren't able to continue that work during the pandemic. But the need for the assistance in those countries is really pressing, including for the reasons that I've just mentioned, and I know that that is on your agenda to travel as soon as possible and to commence that work again. And by pro providing the training in pathology, radiology, medicine, public health and nursing, ADRI will provide enormous assistance to, in the developing countries to detect, diagnose and treat the cases 
of asbestos-related disease, particularly in, in respect of mesothelioma. And through the sharing of the research, the science, and the technologies that ADRI has developed, you'll build the knowledge base and the capacity of other nations to develop their expertise in diagnosis, education, and let's put up that big word, prevention, which Ken did emphasize, containment, risk management, and all I can say is Australia can be most proud of your work. Congratulations. The World Health Organization de designation is a, de is a testament to the excellence of our scientists and researchers. Our lung nurse specialists, and I think we have those represented here today, uh, the public health experts, our PhD students, fantastic. And I'm pleased to say that the work of one of our PhD students has been funded by the Asbestos Diseases Foundation of Australia, so thank you for that. And we are proud patrons of that as well. On behalf of the people of New South Wales, because that is the role in which I'm here today, and as your proud patrons, we thank the Institute. It's minuscule team, talk about nanoscience in, <laughs> in reality. Dennis has a, um, a son-in-law who's involved in, in uh, nanoscience, so we really get, uh, we find that very exciting. You are the nano team uh, of the research world. Congratulations. You've fought for the patients, you've pushed the research and the scientific boundaries of this disease, and you realise that failure is not an option for you. No silver bullet in any of these cancers, but for your team, it's a day to celebrate your achievements, and this is a reward for your tireless endeavours, your global leadership, your global collaboration, your collaboration here with the Institute. Congratulations. So, my great pleasure to officially unveil the World Health Organisation Collaboration, Collaborating Centre Designation Plaque with Professor Ken Takahashi. Thank you.